think the left has done a great job of exposing how, in my view, capitalism kind of had catastrophic success in many ways in generating wealth. But the wealth went to a very small number of people for all sorts of particular reasons, not entirely governmental. So I think you've actually made a lot of progress on that in terms of persuading people like me, who is actually in favor of redistribution of wealth because I think it's destabilizing. But the idea that that could solve all the problems of African-Americans or, or, or would overnight does not convince me because it seems to me that there are other factors involved that we have to account for, namely cultural factors. And I know you've talked about this tension between understanding this as an economic question and as a cultural question. Do you think there's any value to the cultural critique? I'm not sure what the cultural critiques are. I mean, you know, I'm Black American and I don't find myself to be <laughs> culturally deficient in any way. And when I look around my family and my community, I see very obvious uh, structural causes for the situations they're in. In the same way that I see when I look at a lot of White communities, for example, you know, when I look at, um, let's say this is the stereotypical example, but a, a rural white community in West Virginia, I don't subscribe to the belief that the reason they are in multiple generations of poverty is because of a cultural deficit. I see globalization. I see trade deals that shipped uh, ind industrial jobs overseas. I see a changing energy market that is making it less and less fruitful and profitable for coal mining to persist. I see environmental pressures that also constrain the industry that was the only industry that that community was able to benefit from for a long time. I see policies that were decided to set it up as being extractive in nature. So the benefits of all of that coal mining from that community over the years never got put back into the community. I see an opioid crisis driven by the Sacklers and other pharmaceutical players that intentionally preyed on these communities, pushing drugs and oversubscribing opioids to this community in a way that has had devastating effects. So with all of that going on, and that's just taking that particular white community as an example, and when there are similar things that have happened in Black America with the well-documented push by the CIA of drugs into Black communities, et cetera, et cetera, and on and on down the line, redlining we've discussed, why with all of those structural factors at play, we would skip over all of that and start talking about the ephemera of culture, which it's my view that the government doesn't have really any ability or perhaps any um, authority to start trying to legislate over. If I thought, you know, Barack Obama standing on a stage, as he has done, saying, Black people pull up your pants and act right, would have some magical effect on economic outcomes and people in deep poverty in this country, then I'd say he can do it all day. And in, in fact, he can do it all day. It's a free country. There's nobody stopping him. But there have always been people, both within and outside of the Black American community, people like Bill Cosby, people like Barack Obama, who have done the finger wagging and the argument that it really is a social issue at the same time that they are in a position of power to address the well-documented, really tangible material issues at hand. And so what it starts to feel like is the focus on culture is a sleight of hand to prevent people from ever addressing any of the very obvious policy concerns that are staring us in the face. 